Since the inception of the medium, television has always been seen as a cheaper yet more marketable alternative to film. But that does not mean it's cheap to produce, not by a long shot. Some of the most beloved series in television history have had massive budgets. For example, Game of Thrones cost around $6 million an episode to make, and the last season cost $15 million per single episode. HBO has paid main actors in millions. In fact, actress Lena Headey, who played Cersei Lannister, made $144,000 per minute, totaling $3.6 million in the last season, just staring at the window and drinking wine for 25 minutes. What a champion's way to earn money. Most of the TV shows rely on commercials to generate revenue, but there are no commercials shown during the Game of Thrones or other original series on streaming services. So HBO Netflix paying millions of dollars to its actors and actresses, how does anybody make money off the series? HBO does not need any money from ads, and they don't need to. They rely on producing original past-breaking content like The Sopranos, The Wire, right down to the present-day Westworld, and of course Game of Thrones. They confidently associate themselves with the best screenwriters and directors and rely on quality over quantity mechanism of the content, not add money to generate revenue for themselves and their distribution partners, as more and more people tend to pay subscription fees for their cable and online streaming platforms. So HBO does turn a small profit per episode, however all this money and the money the company spends making the episodes is peanuts compared to the money Game of Thrones will make once it goes into syndication. For comparison, the main cast of Friends still makes millions of dollars annually in royalties from that show, which has been in syndication on multiple TV channels across the globe for nearly 13 years now. Think of the enormous money HBO will make from this series and this will all be essentially free money. That is why the cast, the showrunners and HBO itself wanted this show to end quickly. They had to end the show with 6 episodes last season and it probably affected the writing. Generally, the average cost per episode of Game of Thrones was around $6 million. And by the way, some episodes actually have cracked that obscene average budget of $6 million. That Battle of Blackwater episode, where the imp leaked a ship's worth of highly flammable Mountain Dew into the harbor and blew up half of Stannis' army, that cost $8 million. And the last season's budget $15 million per episode. So the cost per episode fluctuates depending on the special effects. So for a season having 10 episodes on average, we are looking around at a budget of 60 to 90 million dollars. So that was the expenditure of HBO per season of the Game of Thrones. It's almost as much as a modestly budgeted theatrical film, but without the benefit of theatrical distribution. Movie theaters are the place where a movie makes its money. For example, the budget of the horror movie Get Out was 4.5 million dollars and it has grossed a massive $252 million. If hypothetically Game of Thrones distributed to only movie theaters just like the Lord of the Rings movies was one book per single movie, it probably could have done in billions of dollars per movie. But there is a probability that it could have flopped as well. Because most people have grown up themselves watching character development over the years. Now for the income, HBO streaming subscription charges about $15 per month on average. According to the stats, around 142 million people are subscribed to it, and that makes a monthly income of HBO around $2.1 billion. And that's just the subscription income. Each season of Game of Thrones run for 10 weeks on average, which is about 2.5 months. Therefore, you required at least 3 months subscription to watch it. And that makes the income of $6.3 billion. But the Game of Thrones was only a branch on a gigantic tree. HBO has a lot of other original series, shows and movies where it spends its billions. A good chunk of its income also comes from selling off DVDs and show merchandise like t-shirts, hoodies, prop swords, armors and other collectibles. Each season DVD of Game of Thrones sells for $60 on the HBO website. So if someone wants to complete series till now, he has to spend $480. If even at least 1 million people buy DVDs in the span of 6 months, that's $480 million straight into HBO's pockets. Or $300 million if you buy one complete set, which is cheaper. You may be thinking that DVDs can be pirated and episodes downloaded online. Yes, that's true, but it helps them in promoting the show as the fans may not buy the episodes, but they will surely buy the merchandise. Merchandising is a very lucrative in fan-based digital entertainment. You may have already noticed virtually every notable channel on YouTube, mostly vloggers and comedy channels, push their merch like out of this world. 
There are some tools to measure estimated income how much YouTubers make from selling merchandise. A YouTuber with 5,000 views per month can earn between $1 and $20 from ads. That same YouTuber could earn between $170 and $870 per month selling merch. A YouTuber with 50,000 views per month can earn between $13 and $200 from ads and between $4,100 and $21,406 from merchandising. So merchandising is way profitable even from what YouTube offers. Well, these are just estimates and not perfectly accurate, but it's pretty close. And now consider this. These numbers are just from YouTube channels. And imagine how much the global phenomenon as the Game of Thrones earns from merchandising, which has hundreds of millions of fans around the world. An epic audience brings all sorts of opportunities to make epic cash. And HBO is aggressively tapping the licensing pipeline to do just that. HBO currently has more than 60 different licensees creating Game of Thrones products, beer, jewelry, mobile games, clothes, and many more. So looking at the numbers, we can say that HBO earned at least $500 million per season of Game of Thrones, and probably even more, and it will keep earning for years to come. Well, thanks for watching, support this channel on Patreon, it will help to increase the quality of the videos as I don't want to put a certain threshold to it. And now we will continue our alternative cheaper spacecraft launch series. If you do like the videos, please do hit the like button and subscribe not to miss upcoming episodes.